Well, you're going to school and you graduate high school. And I guess you were planning on going to college, but then Katrina ends up hitting. You know, it was interesting because like, my high school was the fourth worst school in the nation at the time. Like literally, because they had a they had a killing at one of the other schools, um, very close to ours. My eleventh grade year, so you know, going into my twelfth grade year, you know, normally they give seniors like early release, and you have this whole like normal senior experience. It wasn't like that for us. They actually gave us these like bullshit electives that they just made up. It was like PE three and PE four and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So like. You know, for the most part, a lot of kids would just skip school and just do whatever. But, like, I never got any real guidance from my school. So I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself, you know. And I was kind of, like, already in the streets a little bit. So when Katrina hit, a lot of people was taking opportunities to, like, you know, go to Grambling and go to all these different places. And I'm like, yo, bro, honestly, I don't really know what I want to do with my life enough to... Go to a college because, you know, rather you believe it or not, like Sally may gonna be on your ass. You know what I'm saying? They might be giving you this this free ride right now because of because of Katrina, but like college ain't gonna be free. Like I don't care what y'all say. You know what I mean? And I was too afraid to to go to college for like general studies or something like that and then end up in debt and still not knowing what I wanted to do with my life. And to be honest, that happened to like a lot of my friends and and family as well. You know what I mean? They just ended up in debt. And me, I tried to just jump straight into the work world. So um, I kind of started picking up little uh, little odd crafts. You know what I mean? And um, I found cooking, and and I started doing like electrical work as well. You know what I mean? Still kind of one foot in the streets and just doing whatever I could do to make me some money, but that also um, I could be the boss of. That makes sense. You know what I mean? I, I always had this entrepreneurial spirit about myself. And um, yeah, it, it was good to be able to find a couple a couple things that I could use my hands and get that instant gratification. You know what I mean? Because it's just something about when you cook for somebody and, you know, they have something that they never had in their life. For instance, like a, like a charbroiled oyster, right? They're famous in New Orleans, and a lot of people are like, man, I don't eat oysters. If I make you some oysters, you're going to love them. You know, and I've watched people's lives change right before my eyes. And it's the same thing, like, if I if I wire a whole studio, you know, and then when I hit the switch and it all lights up, it's like, damn, you get this, this instant gratification that, like, you know, nobody could take that from you. Nobody could take those skills from you. Like, I could still get out here and do some construction. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say, uh, you know, you mentioned food. New Orleans is one of my favorite restaurant cities. And in fact, Commander's Palace is one of my all-time favorite restaurants. That's dope. Commander's Palace, I actually just went there the last time I was in New Orleans. But yeah, we definitely famous for the restaurants, you know. And I've oh, worked yeah. for quite a few of them. I worked for, uh, like, Drago's is a mom and pop that kind of is getting to the chain point now. But, you know... We helped them start that business from the ground. You know what I mean? I, I was I was an oyster shucker. I that was like my first cooking. Well, actually, my first cooking job was at a restaurant called Houston's. You know what I mean? It's like oh yeah, I yeah, love that they're place. a pretty big chain. But that was like yeah. my 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 first experience as a cook. I was a fried cook there, and um, yeah, I've I worked for Drago's. I worked for Mister Ed's, like a, a few different places. You know, and um, it was kind of good for me because in that. And that time I was kind of finding acting at the same time. So they were like flexible jobs. You know what I mean? Well, I'd be like, look, I'm going to go do this audition and come right back. Because I couldn't, you know what I mean? I didn't want to get in no trouble. I just kind of wanted to, uh, to to find a place to be able to release something, you know, which was, which was dope, you know? Well, speaking of the acting, so I guess while doing these odd jobs, you went to an acting workshop. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm riding with one of my partners one day, and we hear this ad on the radio, like, you know, there was this lady named Jacqueline Fleming who just started this acting class, and she had just come from L.A., and my partner's like, man, you should do it, because I always do, like, different voices and different impressions and stuff like that. They're like, bro, you, you always be having everybody laughing, like, you should try that shit. So I'm like, all right, cool. But, you know, we was just riding around bullshitting, like, you know, nobody wrote the number down and nothing. So, um... 
like a week later, one of my homies, she asked me, he like, bro, what happened to the acting class? Did you ever go? And I was like, well, I mean, nobody wrote the number down. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, like, you know, it was, it was a good conversation at the time, but you know, it was what it was. And he remembered the number off the top of his head. So I was like, damn, okay. All right. So I like took it as a sign from God. You know what I mean? So I went there, you know, I got all these fucking tattoos. So I wore like a, uh, a, a three-piece suit, you know what I mean? And try to like get her to let me in the class. And she was like, I'm going to be honest with you, Jason. Um, You're terrible, but if you stick with this, it, it, it could really work out for you. So I'm like, I ain't really care. I just wanted a place to be able to go to make new friends. You know what I mean? Because on one side, here I am, you know, trying to find these, trying to stick to these odd jobs. It really wasn't enough money. So I still got like one foot in the streets. But, you know, my best friend had just got killed. I had some other people that, because in, like, in the streets, it's never what you think it is, right? It's always friends killing friends, people who know each other, setting each other up and stuff like that. And it's, like, never like you think it is on TV where it ain't no snitching and all of that. Like, no, nah, everybody's pillow talking. Somebody know the whole story. Somebody going to tell the police and they're going to come to your house and they're going to find you. You know what I mean? And I remember... <laughs> Who is beating on my door like the police? Who is that? Police. And you're like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And your heart just drops. And they tell you, like, yo, we know this and we know. And it's like, damn. So I just felt my world just closing in on me, you know? And my sister would always tell me, like, it's them niggas you hang out with. You need to find you some new friends. And, you know, so I just, I looked at my acting class like, yo, this is my way to finally find new friends, potentially find something better to do with myself. You know, just on a day-to-day -day basis, I didn't really think that I was going to be a, a big actor, you know, because, you know, when you look at people like Wendell Pierce and, and Anthony Mackie, guys who are originally from New Orleans, they still had to go to New York or go to L.A. in order to have a career, you know. But at the time, it had just started bubbling in New Orleans and people were shooting movies there. They was doing a bunch of movies there, so... I was like, in the right place at the right time, you know? And and God gave me this gift that I didn't even know I had because, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe five weeks into the class, I ended up getting signed by this lady named Tasha Smith. Um, I got maybe, I don't know, four or five auditions. And then I ended up booking this thing called Texas Killing Fields with uh with with Jason Clark and Sam Worthington, you know, and Chloe Moretz, you know what I mean? But at the time, like, I'm fresh out the hood. So I'm like, you know, there's a bunch of white people in this movie. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know these people like that. So all I could think was, I need more, I need more, I need more. Like I was never an extra on set. I didn't know anything about it. Like Chloe was literally walking me around, like skipping, like, come on, I'll show you, you know, and like taking me to the to lunch. And they got a bunch of extras sitting on the other side, and there's this huge table of food. And she's like, Yeah, get whatever you want. And I'm like, You sure? Like, she, I was like, Why they can't? She was like, No, this is for us. They have to wait until, you know, after, after, um, after we eat and to eat. And I'm like, What? So I'm just getting this, like, this, this, uh, this push to the front of the line, you know what I mean? And it's, it's all God's work, but I, like I said, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. So, um, yeah, I ended up doing two more movies with, uh, with, with Mark Wahlberg, Broken City and Contraband. And I did this other film with, um, uh, Kung Lee and, uh, man, why is, why am I drawing a blank on his name right now? Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, which was crazy, you know? But all of this stuff was like in New Orleans or, or the neighboring cities, you know what I'm saying? So I could literally jump in my car and drive and be what they call a local hire, you know? But I was just really lucky at the time. And what's so crazy about it is that, To be honest, I first jumped in this thinking that I would have to wear this mask and be afraid to be the person who I was and have the the experience that, that I had. But honestly, those first four roles that I booked, you know, were like 
off the things that I was trying to hide, you know, my tattoos, my accent. You know, people loved it. They was like, come on, nah, you know, he has a beautiful smile. You know what I mean? Like, nah, let's do it. I remember when um <laughs> when we worked with Bolt on uh on Contraband, he was like, um, let's, let's, uh, should we go shirt on or shirt off? And then Bolt's like, let's see it with the shirt off. And I take my shirt off and I got all these tattoos. And he was like, definitely shirt off. We're gonna use that. So I'm like, damn. You know, so it was it was just a blessing to be able to um be embraced by this world that I thought was gonna push me out. You know, and then um I did those four movies and then after that. Yeah, Compton. It took off. So, Contraband with Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Yeah. That was your first, like, kind of big international release. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. And they're about to have the premiere in France. They're going to fly you out. But things didn't go that way. Right, 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 right. So, um, I was actually doing, like, this, this small play at the time, right? And uh, we're leaving rehearsal and we get pulled over because we're like in this Monte Carlo, but apparently this Monte Carlo, uh, like the, that was like kind of like the it car at the time, right? People were, were in the Monty's and stuff and um, it fit the description for some sort of robbery or something like that. So they pull us out thinking it's about the robbery. And they got this whole charge on there, like, yeah, so they take me to jail to, like, violate my probation, right? Because I was on probation at the time. So they violate me, sit me down for, like, 90 days, bro, for nothing. It was just something. I didn't, I didn't even do nothing. And I'm sitting there reading the newspaper, you know, watching the commercials on TV, like, bro, I'm in this movie. I'm supposed to be in France at... You know, at the at the premiere and everybody's like, man, whatever. Actors don't go to jail, man. You tripping. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, seriously, bro. I'm supposed to be in here. And it was like the worst feeling in the world. Like, damn, how do I just keep backtracking? You know what I mean? As soon as I think my blessing falls into my lap, this is like the first international open like this. You know what I mean? Nobody had ever done that before, Mark Wahlberg. So, um, yeah, supposed to be in France and and just really felt down about everything. But it was like a blessing in disguise, right? Because I was really on probation for Texas, but um the way it works is like if you're in a neighboring state, you can pay them like an extra twenty five bucks a month to your probation officer or whatever and just report to them. So my probation officer never reported to Texas at all. So to Texas, they're looking at it like, oh, okay, well, you just are delinquent. You ain't been paying us. You ain't been coming to see your probation officer. And I'm like, no, I got everything. I got all my receipts. You know what I mean? So they they waited until literally day 89 of these 90 days to come pick me up from from New Orleans to bring me to, to Brownwood, Texas, right? So they got me shackled like a dog in the back of a, a charger between two other guys. And we we take this like 15 hour ride in the back of this charger, just balled up. And I get there and um I, I see a judge maybe after maybe like two days or something like that. And I'm like, nah, you know, I got everything. I had my mom bring all my receipts. <laughs> and um not only did they, you know, accept my my story, well, not my story, but my plea but they also let me off probation after that. And it was like the blessing that I needed because I couldn't just leave the state. I couldn't even just leave the city without, you know, some sort of permission to do so. And right after that happened, it it kind of was the door that I needed to open for me to be able to go do straight out of Compton. Mm. 